and then we're gonna work on some writing for the entire week today the students completed their bucketing the evidence activity i'm really proud of the writing that they're creating Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Monday, the first day of a full week of school. I'm finally making it on a Monday. I'm finally starting the week after being sick for the past two weeks and not being able to be here the entire week. But I am not planning on being absent this week. I'm actually feeling a lot better. I do have to make sure I still take it easy and not stay like super late after school and go home and rest and do what I need to do. But I am looking forward to having an amazing Full week with the students and it starts pretty soon when I let them in I'm sure you can hear all the noise outside because they sit outside our doors but right now I'm going to get their do now assignment ready and on their desk so that when they come in they have that assignment to work on and then we're gonna work on some writing for the entire week along with continuing our chapter 12 in our go math textbook which is on data and measurement it's gonna be an amazing week I get to take you along with us and we'll talk later because I got to get some things done. All right. See you later. All right. It's now the end of the day and I wanted to show you a couple of things that the students were able to do today in writing. We did a bucketing activity again that I mentioned in a previous vlog, but we went ahead and did it with a kids and sports opinion essay that the students wrote about last week on Friday for 45 minutes. So I wanted them to work in groups to go ahead and create a bucketing the evidence activity where they titled their bucket with the reasons why they had their opinion and in each bucket they then added post-it notes that had text evidence to support that reason or idea so then after that we went to lunch and after lunch i showed them a brain pop video on customary units of measurement which was a really great review to review the first half of the chapter and then they took their mid chapter checkpoint which i did look at all their papers and they did a good job some of them had to go back and tweak a couple of questions because they didn't quite understand what the question was asking them to do and i actually gave them an opportunity to do that and and they went ahead and corrected that and they did a pretty good job and then we went ahead and started working on adding some more notes in our science notebook because we're behind i haven't been here so i'll show you that as well and at the end of the day we had students continue presenting their white house projects so let me show you the bucketing activity my example at least so that you can see the activity all right so just to remind you this is the kids in sports text set that we had where it went over whether or not schools should allow good grades for students to participate in after school sports and the students had to choose their opinion and write about it so this is what we did last week and then the students wrote an essay about it on friday and this is the bucketing activity i had already created these posters for them I drew the buckets so that they can easily go ahead and title their buckets with the reason to support their opinion. Now I did a double one. So as you can see, this one supports grades before sports. And two of my reasons for this was sports take time away from learning. And yeah, I had to squeeze the heart because I forgot to add it. Learning comes first. And then the post-its here represent text evidence that supports that reason and the same here. The other thing that I don't have here yet is I was gonna use small post-it notes to go ahead and elaborate on these types of evidence or on this idea, and that is another little post-it that gets added into their buckets. Now, this is for pro grades, and on the other side, I have, no, you should allow students to just play sports after school regardless of grades, and two of the reasons that I came up with was it's not fair and playing sports has benefits so again these are the text evidence pieces that support that and these are the pieces of text evidence that support this and i did put the sources and the last thing i need to do for my example is to go ahead and elaborate on these the students already started elaborating so it's just a matter of them finishing tomorrow and then they can choose one body paragraph to revise based on this bucketing strategy 
Now my homework is changing a little bit this week. We're not doing spelling or vocabulary. We are doing our little weekly math review. This comes from One Stop Teacher Shop and it just reviews everything we've gone over up to the current chapter that we're on. So some good review for the students to do throughout the week. This is due Friday. I usually give my homework assignments at the beginning of the week and then they're due at the end of the week. And then this is for reading and language arts. Basically, I have this text set that I got from Scholastic News a while back and I created this cover sheet for it with a direction so that they know what I need them to do. And basically this talks about video games and whether video games are good or bad for students. So this has three text sets. This one goes over yes and no, so both sides. And then this one over here is against it. And then this article three is for it. And then they have these questions that they need to answer based on those sets. And I went ahead and I added a FSA based writing prompt to it. And I did make it into a two part prompt. So the articles talked about kids playing video games, write an essay in which you give your opinion about whether playing video games is good for kids or not. And what are the benefits of playing or not playing video games based on your opinion? Use information from the sources in your essay. So I did also include the planning sheet where they will gather evidence and create a plan for their essay. And then they have their three lined pages so that they can write their essay. They have the entire week to work on this. They got it today, Monday. It is due on Friday. So I am looking forward to see how they do on this prompt. And I'm trying to choose prompts that they're interested in or that they will want to write in. And this was one that they really want to write in. And then I also gave them my elaboration sentence starters to help them with elaboration as they write their essay. This is available in my TPT store. I'll make sure I link it down below. Now, just to show you what we did in our science notebook, this is where we left off last time. This is my example, so it doesn't have the notes from science doodles, but this is from science and math doodles. I'll link her down below. And this is the one that we did today. So we added the standard and the standard is from Jason's online classroom. And this is an FSA standard that the students need to know in fourth grade for science. And then I added the science doodle notes that goes along with that standard. And then we added the standard for the law of conservation of mass. And no, I didn't have any fancy thing to add, but I had the students draw this out, which this is supposed to be a balance. And this is supposed to be like a little robot that's built and then the robot in pieces. Basically, the law of conservation of mass says that the parts of an object will have the same total mass as the mass of the whole object. And that's basically where we finished off with our notes in science. That in a nutshell is what we did today, Monday. So now I'm going to take you on to Tuesday. Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday. So I'm actually coming to you at the end of the day because it's been a really busy day like it usually is when I come to you at the end of the day. But I wanted to talk to you about what we ended up doing. Today, the students completed their bucketing the evidence activity, and I will show you my completed one so that you can see what I did with it. And then they got colored writing paper so that they can start revising their entire essay. And I just wanna say, I'm gonna show you all of the different models that I gave to the students. And even though I modeled on the board and I shared, there were still some students that were not quite doing what I needed them to do. So tomorrow we're gonna spend some time continuing to revise those essays. And I'm actually gonna also start sitting one-on-one -on -one conferencing with each student so that we can go over their strengths and the areas that they need to focus on in their writing, which is very crucial to help students understand what is working in their writing and what areas they need to focus on so that they can strengthen. So I wanna show you that. And then in math, what we ended up doing was we were going over metric units of length and I went ahead and I reviewed again, Kane Henry died drinking chocolate milk, which is a mnemonic device to help them remember the order in which the units of the metric system go. And then the base is the one metric unit that you're working on. And since we were doing metric length, we were working on meters. So I wanna show you on the board how I went ahead and show that to the students. And I'm actually gonna work on creating a note page so that they can add it to their notebook so that they can refer to later 
on as we continue working with measurement. And I want to piggyback and say that for their essay, I went ahead and I started writing a rubric on the board. And basically the rubric went over what points they were going to get according to the different parts that they were doing in their essay and how I'm going to grade their revised essay. So that's the rubric that I worked on. I did put it on the board and I showed it to them and I did took a picture and a little video, which you already probably saw. And I'm going to type it up so that I can then attach it to their essays as the rubric that I used in order to grade that particular essay. I am going to give it a score based on the FSA writing rubric, but I do want to grade it based on a different kind of criteria. So that's what I did with that. And then in science, we went ahead and watched a video through Discovery Education on the changes in matter, which went over physical and chemical changes. And I can't wait to show you some of the resources that I got with that video, which was pretty cool. All right, so let's start with all of the modeling that I did for the students in their essay on whether or not schools should require students to get good grades in order to participate in after school sports. So let's take a look at that now. So I did a lot of simple writing slides on PowerPoint. As you can see here from the left side, there's a lot of writing that happened in our classroom today with me modeling different parts of their essay. So let me play show so that I can show you a little bigger. Basically, I started by showing them different examples of introductions. I did not color code them, but we did go over all the different parts of this introduction. So I usually have students work on an opener, and an opener, again, is a general statement about the topic, and then the last sentence is their topic sentence. Since this is an opinion essay, we were working on stating our opinion on the topic. So here is one example, as you can see, the opener with the topic sentence. Then I went ahead and I did another example on the topic of no, school should not require good grades for students to participate in after school sports. And then here's another one. So I did three for that point of view. And I also did three for the other point of view that states that yes, school should require students to get good grades. So I gave them three different examples for the pro and three different examples for the con. Then I went ahead and I color coded one of my body paragraphs. I did my first body paragraph for the pro. And basically I have the transition highlighted at the beginning followed by my reason sentence, which is my topic sentence for the entire paragraph, which goes back to address the topic or my opinion. And then I elaborated on that, which is in orange. And then the blue is evidence from the text to support what I am trying to say. And I make sure that I show students how to make references to the text. So here's one and over here is another one, author of source three also shares. And as you can see, I make sure that I show them all the elaboration that they need to include in order to support their reason, which supports their opinion on the topic. So I did that, and then I went ahead and I created conclusion examples. So I did the same thing I did with the introductions. I gave three examples for the pro and three examples for the con. So this is my first example on no, they shouldn't require good grades to participate in after school sports. So I tell them with an opinion conclusion, they need to start with their restatement of their opinion, and then they need to kind of state their most important fact or idea that they're trying to state overall in their essay and then i want them to end with a lasting impression which is a little extra that makes the reader think feel or smile so this is my first sample of a conclusion and this is my second one on the same point of view and this is my third one on the same point of view then i went ahead and i included three separate ones on the opposing point of view which is that no school should require students to get good grades before they can participate in sports after school but it follows the same format for the conclusion in this case because it's opinion again you're restating your opinion you're stating the most important fact or idea and then you're ending with a lasting impression so this is the next one that i came up with and this is the last example that i came up with for that particular point of view and that's basically what we worked on in writing today, which was pretty good, but we still need to continue tomorrow. Now, as far as the bucketing, the evidence activity goes, I, yesterday I showed you this same paper, but without the elaboration stickies. So I included these elaboration stickies to elaborate a little bit more on the evidence that I had put on each bucket. This one supports the idea that it's not fair. And this one supports the idea that playing sports has benefits. And again, you can see in the little stickies, my elaboration 
on each of these pieces of evidence from the text. Then on the flip side, I included the opposing view so that they can also see another example. And here are my little pieces of elaboration for each evidence that I included in each bucket. This one is sports take time away from learning, and this one is learning comes first. So these are all my little elaboration stickies that I added in order to complete the bucketing activity, and this is what the students also worked on finishing today. Now I wanna show you the mnemonic device of King Henry Diet drinking chocolate milk on the board, which helped the students understand how we're moving across the metric system, which is a base 10 system, just like our place value system. And it also reviewed decimal values and fractions and all that jazz. So let me show you what I did that I'm gonna work on creating a note page for the students to put in their notebooks. So check it out. So here it is, basically King Henry Diet base drinking chocolate milk. And this stands for kilo, hecto, deca, base, deci, centi, milli, and then if you know the flow vocabulary video, you know it ends with weight. But basically, I show them that the base is whatever unit of measurement we're working with in the metric system because we were doing length, we were working with meter. So that is times one. That would be like your ones place, followed by the tens place, which is times 10, followed by the hundreds, followed by the thousands, and I added that as well over here. I added a decimal value because then deci, centi, milli belong to the decimal place value. So a deci is one tenth, centi is one hundredth, and then milli is one thousand. So I also included all the abbreviations for all the metric system units, and that pretty much helped the students. So over here on the top, you kind of see what we were working with. We were trying to decide how many meters is 75 centimeters. So I told them, put the number above the unit that you're looking at or you're working with, and then as you move it towards the meter, which is the one we're looking for, the decimal point that is invisible over here next to the five moves in the same direction that you're moving. So then 75 centimeters is the same as 7.5 decimeters, which is the same as 0.75 meters or 75 hundredths of a meter. And that's what helped the students kind of visualize how to convert all these metric units of length. Now, as far as science goes, I wanna show you quickly the video that I chose to use during our science lesson today on chemical changes and physical changes in matter. And the cool thing is that this Discovery Ed video also came with some black line masters and a teacher guide that had a pretest and a video quiz that the video also had at the end that the students could actually work on paper as well. And it had a post test that the students worked on. It was pretty good. So let me show you that now. All right, so our district has access to Discovery Education and I just searched for videos on changes in matter and I found this one that actually has different video segments. Now the way Discovery Ed works is that you can actually just show the little video segments if you want, but because each video segment was directly connected to the standard that we're working with, I decided to show the full video which ended up being like about 17 minutes. And here's what I mean, the black line masters are here along with the teacher guide, which basically this is the black line master so it starts with a pretest, and then it goes over the video quiz and then it has a discussion question that is optional I did not use it today but it's good to have a vocabulary exercise and then different things that you can do like labs so that students can discover the changes in matter if you want to extend the idea and observing changes in matter in the environment writing about chemical reactions and then they have the post test and here is a teacher edition, which includes the instructions for following each different activity along with the answer key. So I really enjoyed this video. It was pretty simple to go through. And after the students were done with their post test, we went ahead and together went over the answers so that they can show their understanding of the concept. Overall, it was a really great activity to do and a lesson that they were able to engage in as they were looking at the different changes in matter as it occurs with physical and chemical changes. Now, another fun thing that I wanted to share with you today was a noise meter because at one point the students were mentioning that Ms. Guzman last week had drawn like a rectangle on the board and showed them the different noise levels and where they needed to stay. So one of the students says, maybe we should have a noise meter. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. You know that Class Dojo has a noise meter. And then I show them another noise meter that I want to share with you. And it works if you have a microphone connected to your computer in the classroom that is maybe connected to the interactive whiteboard. For me, it is a webcam that has a microphone and it actually worked in class and the students actually had a little bit too much fun making all the noise level meters go up and down so let me show you what that looks like 
So on Class Dojo, what you want to do is you want to go down to the toolkit, and this will come up, and then you can select the noise meter, which right now is this sensitive. And as I am talking, you see that the noise levels are going up and down. Another quiet. See how that works? So that's really cool. And you can actually set the sensitivity to whatever you need it to be. So right now it's kind of low because I'm actually not yelling, but you can set the sensitivity however you need it to be. And that's one way that you can maybe use a noise meter in your classroom. But another thing that I wanted to share with you is a website called Bouncy Balls. And basically it's bouncyballs.org. And it is another noise meter. So begin bouncing. So right now I am going to put my microphone on and you see how the... <laughs> so right here is shushing because right here I set the noise. I mean the, yeah, the noise alert. You could put no sound, you could put a beep or you can put shush. And it goes and says things like it's too noisy because my sensitivity is kind of high. So I can actually lower the sensitivity a little bit. And you can see how the balls kind of bounce around. Now, the cool thing is that you can also change the theme. So you could put emojis. And instead of bouncy balls, you have bouncing emojis. Or you can have bubbles that move around as the noise level goes up. Or even eyeballs that move around as the sound is captured by the microphone that you have connected to your computer. So I just wanted to share that with you. I'll be sure to link bouncyballs.org down below in case you're interested in using it with your students. So that's basically all I wanted to share with you today, Tuesday. And now I'm gonna move you on to Wednesday. Good morning and welcome to Wednesday. So I'm actually coming to you in the morning. I'm getting my day ready for the lessons that we have planned for today, including the writing that we are about to do this morning. But before we get to writing, the students will finish presenting their White House projects for the students that haven't presented yet. And I wanted to share something with you. I got a new shirt from Lipstick and Littles and I love it because it is so appropriate. Yesterday, I got in the mail the latest Rachel Hollis book, Girls Stop Apologizing. And this shirt is perfect because it is one of her phrases. And then Ashley at Lipstick and Littles added something a little extra, so check it out. It says, go all in fearlessly every day. So it's awesome. And let me just show you the book really quickly. Here it is right here. And I can't wait to start reading it. I also have an Audible account. So I'm also going to buy it on Audible so that on the ride to work and the ride home, I can listen to her narrating the book, which is what I did with Girl, Wash Your Face. So love it. I'll definitely leave a link down below for this shirt and for the book as well, if you're interested. All right, so let me get a couple of things ready for this morning and I'll check back with you later. It's now the end of the day and we had a very long training this afternoon after school was out. We had a faculty meeting where we were trained on administering the state assessment, which is the Florida Standards Assessment, which we shortened it as FSA. So lots of information because believe it or not, testing season is coming upon us. Once we are back from spring break, we're going to start testing with our writing tests and then other grades in the school are also going to test. For example, our third graders are going to take their reading assessment on that Wednesday and Thursday when we get back from spring break, which is the first week of April. So there's a lot of things happening in the next coming weeks and we are definitely on testing crunch time. So this morning, the students finished presenting their White House projects and they did an amazing job and I can't wait to display them in the classroom and then we went ahead and continued with writing I was able to conference with six students and give them really good feedback I'm really proud of the writing that they're creating because even though they have to tweak a couple things here and there in their writing for the most part they have a good writing base as to how to develop an essay and I'm very proud of them. So it's just fine tuning those little things that they need to be a little bit more conscious of as they write and address a topic. So tomorrow we're gonna continue working on revising that essay and I'm going to try to conference with the remaining students so I can give them the feedback that they need in order to do a good job with that revision. Then on Friday, they're going to take a timed practice test 
for two hours, which is the amount of time that they are going to take on the real assessment. So then after lunch, we went ahead and we went over metric units of mass and volume, and it was so easy. I didn't expect the lesson to go that quickly and the students grasping the concept really quickly, that once we finished the assignment, I told them if we could finish everything before the day was over, I will take him outside for outdoor recess because the day was beautiful. It was nice and cool. The sun was shining. It was nice blue clear skies. And when I told them we were going to do that, a lot of them got up to give me a hug. And they're like, why are you so awesome? We love you, Miss Sanchez. I love them too. And I'm so glad that we were able to do that and finish our Wednesday on a really high note with outdoor recess, enjoying the sunlight and just having a great time. So thank you, my dear students, for doing such a great job these past three days. And I'm going to go ahead and end today's vlog right here. So I will include Thursday and Friday as a separate two-day vlog to finish off the week. But I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me on this three-day vlog. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos videos. I hope you have a beautiful magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.